Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Gold, joining you on a Good Friday. Happy Easter weekend to you all. We're one day away from Arsenal returning to Premier League action with that big, big game against Liverpool at the Emirates tomorrow night. I will be at that one. Looking forward to it, so keep your eyes peeled. I'll try and do my usual before and after the match. Do my uh, live team news broadcast and then try and do my player ratings as long as time is permitting at full time so we'll look ahead to that game in today's video do my predicted 11 team news that sort of thing towards the end but a few topics i want to discuss first um before we get to that involving certainly the comments i'm sure some of you have seen them by now from lucas torreira that he has made over to espn uh, argentina um, and also look, uh, look a little bit at what Mikel Arteta had to say about Arsenal's transfer plans for the summer. So let's get cracking on today's video, shall we? We'll start with Torreira. That's certainly the big news. Um, his comments to ESPN Argentina have certainly spread around already. If you haven't seen them, I will read through some of them. They're clearly very emotional. We all know what's happened with Lucas. He has lost his mother, unfortunately, to coronavirus. Um, he's been given time off by Athletic to go to go back to Uruguay to spend time with his family. Um, and he's been speaking about his future over there and stated his desire to join Boca Juniors, obviously the Argentine Giants, um, and has asked Arsenal to do all they can to try and make that move possible um, in the summer. So let's talk through his quotes. Um, Torreira says, I want to be close to my home, my family. I have a contract at Arsenal and I'm on loan at Atletico, but I want to go to Boca. I hope the clubs can agree it's been two years since I was enjoying myself personally. I haven't had continuity. Arsenal hurt me. And at Atletico, I don't play like I want. Nobody from Boca has called. They sent me a shirt. And the day Boca played Santos, I sent a message to encourage them. I just want to play for Boca. I have made my decision. I will do it for my father. He asked me and I'm going to do it. So very, very clear comments from uh, Lucas there. I'll go over a few more he's made. Sort of talks about the emotion of what he's felt in the last few weeks. Says, I'm trying to understand the situation. It's difficult to come to term with, but as time passes, we will come to live with this pain. My mother was 53 years old and died from COVID. There was an outbreak in Frey Bentos, where Torreira's family live, and she spent 11 days fighting, but on Monday morning I received the worst news. I asked Athletic over time off. Um, Simeone understood everything, and he gave me a week. They've been very good to me. On Sunday, I'll probably return. I have to do my duty and life must continue. Atletico have been very good and it's and it's important. It's not a violent emotion, a crazy decision because of my mother. I've always said that I want to play for Boca. I'm dying to play for Boca and I will always say it. The night my mother died, one of the first to hear the news was my agent. I don't want to play in Europe anymore. I want to play for Boca. Very interesting emotional comments there from Lucas Torreira, who we know is a very emotional person. We've seen him in tears before after the Europa League final uh, defeat to Chelsea, after the Granit Xhaka incident when he clashed with fans, um, when he was being substituted. The whole That whole incident left Torreira in tears as well, seeing the player uh, Xhaka and the fans clash like that. You know, he's a very emotional person. We know he's been not really ever settled in England. That has been an issue. Uh, that's why uh, certainly a big part of why his form dipped off in the second half of his first year in Arsenal. Obviously started so, so well. Looked like he was going to be an absolute superstar here. He's gone to Atletico Madrid. It hasn't quite happened for him. He's not played enough football. Um, understandably, really, because you look at how Atletico are doing this season. Simeone's got his team. He's not going to change it because they're looking on course for the title. So... Um, Torreira has just been a bit of a bit part this season, really, which is something he wouldn't have expected when he went over there. He would have been hoping to play and play well. Arsenal would have certainly been hoping he was going to play and play well because that would have raised his value. And now these comments have put Arsenal in a very difficult situation, really. It's going to be an interesting one to see how they try and handle this situation. On one hand, yes, they like Lucas Torreira. They'll want to do all they can um, to facilitate a move away and um, so that he's happy. Um, you know, they're not against selling Lucas. They would have sold him if the summer, if they could. They couldn't make that happen. They'll be very open to selling him this summer. But on the other hand, they can't just give him away. And you look at what Arsenal would value Lucas at. 
you know, they signed him for 25 odd million, 23 million, whatever it was. They won't want to lose too much of that money. He's still got two years left on his contract, so they can't just give him away. And Boca Juniors, I think their club record signing is only 10 or 11 million pounds. So, you know, they don't have very much money. So what what can Arsenal do here? On one hand, they want to help Luke, they want to help Lucas Torreira, and they're not, you know, they're not, um, they don't want to keep him. They don't, you know, they're not going to block a move away, but. They can't just give an asset away, and Lucas Torreira is an asset. He's a contracted player. He's got two years left on his contract. He's young. He's an international. You can't just give him away for half the price. Although I know a lot of you will say, well, look, Arsenal have been giving away players for a long, long time, and that is true, but you've got to learn from his mistakes. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they handle this situation. Obviously, these quotes have come out after Mikel Arteta had his press conference, so we didn't get to put the quotes to Mikel to get his first thoughts on it. I'm sure he probably would have... Um, stay pretty tight-lipped anyway because we want time to uh, weigh them up and talk to the club and try and make a decision. But it's going to be, it's going to be certainly represent a challenge for him and for Edu to decide what they're going to do with Lucas because if he has got his heart set just purely on junior, uh, joining Boca Juniors, then that is going to be an issue just because of the lack of money that Boca have and the valuation that Arsenal will have over Lucas Torreira. I mean, let me know what you guys think of this, as, as always, in the comments. You know, what do you think Arsenal should do? Should they grant Lucas his wish and, you know, let go five, ten million pounds? Or do they need to come up with some sort of better solution here for him? Now, Lucas is a very emotional person. I've said that. Obviously, this is, he's literally said these quotes the week his mother has passed away. He's still got two months until the end of the season. He's going to go back to Spain now and carry on playing. Those emotions will probably settle down a little bit. And maybe he will, you know, he'll come to see, well, look, it's not as easy as that. So I think a lot's going to come, will happen with whether Arsenal can come to some sort of agreement over payment with Boca, you know, whether it be spread over three, four, five years that sort of helps Boca um, commit to the sort of financial outlay that Arsenal want. Do Boca have any players that Arsenal could be interested in? We don't know that at all yet. You know, is there something that Arsenal can do with that in terms of a swap deal? Um it's going to, yeah, it's a tricky situation. And on one hand, I feel really sorry for Lucas. He's a really, you know, we all loved him when he came. I don't think any of us will ever forget that goal against Tottenham and the atmosphere after that goal at the Emirates. And, it, you know, it's just a, one of the most special days I've had at the Emirates in a long, long time. And so you've got that on one hand and you want to help him out and you feel really, really sorry for him. But on the other hand, this is a business, which is a horrible thing to say, but it is. And clubs just can't let £10 million fly out the window, especially in the current climate when Arsenal are losing hundreds of million pounds as it is. So, um, yeah, it's a really difficult one. And as always, please let me know what you think in the comments below, uh, what you think Arsenal should do. OK, sort of tied into that a little bit now. We'll talk about Mikel Arteta's comments on the summer transfer plans and whether selling players is going to be key to raising funds, whether the players who are out on loan like Torreira, um, they've been sent out on loan with a eye on Arsenal selling them in the summer or whether he thinks they're going to come back and actually play a key part um, in his squad next season. So I'll go through some of these comments that he's had to say. In terms of whether Arsenal are going to have to sell players to raise funds, he said, obviously we need support from everybody to try and do what we've done so far and we've had it so far. The commitment and the vision that we all share is unquestionable and we had a lot of meetings about that and we're all on the same page. We know where we are and we are very realistic about what we are. The things we have done have consequences because it generates some instability that is necessary to make changes. We need some stability now to grow and evolve in the way we want. The time frame is the tricky thing because we need to win immediately. So he's saying there, you know, he still knows there's an awful lot of things that Arsenal need to do um, to get the sort of squad he wants. And it is going to continue to cause a little bit of instability at a time when really he needs stability. Um, um, but And so he knows there's still plenty of things to do. But he also knows it's, you, know, you can't just sit still in this time. The time frame isn't, is tricky because everyone wants success straight away and we already see some of the frustration with fans I certainly see on social media when you talk about the project and all that you know trust the process that term that seems to have appeared at our, um, on social media nowadays um, and it's hard to do that because a lot of people want immediate success but unfortunately when you're picking up the pieces that Mikel Arteta has picked up over the last few years um, you can't do something immediately admittedly we did have immediate success with the FA Cup win last season but I think that sort of masked over a little bit the size of the job that Mikel and Edu and everyone else at the club has got to do. Um, in terms of w whether players who have been sent out on loan like Torreira, as I mentioned, will be brought back into the fold or they will be sold, this is what he had to say. 
Uh, that will be the thing that we have to address at the end of the season. We loaned them out because we wanted to give them some game time and see the level that they can perform at away from here, try to develop them and then bring them back here to try and use them. That's the first idea. After, we will evaluate what they've done, the level that they've shown and how much they can accomplish with the way that we want to play and the squad that we have in our hands. So a little bit sort of leaving it open there. For me, I think the idea is on certainly a lot of these loans is to look to sell them. Uh, Lucas Trier, we've just discussed. I think obviously Arsenal are going to have to come to some sort of solution with him in the summer to move him on. It's clear that his time at Arsenal has pretty much come to an end. Um, Ainsley Maitland-Niles as well. Yeah, you know, he looks like he definitely wants to move away from Arsenal. I don't think Arsenal will stand in his way this summer like they did last summer. So it's about getting the best possible price tag for Ainsley. Uh, Joe Willock as well. I personally think it's time to move Joe on. Now, if he if decent offers come in for him, if he continues, because he's, he's finishing the season pretty well for Newcastle. So you'd think there will be some offers for him from Premier League clubs. Can Arsenal get a decent amount of money for him? Um, Matteo Guendouzi, we all know, one year left in his contract. Arsenal are going to have to try and sell him this summer because you don't think he's going to sign a new one. Um, I don't think Arsenal are going to offer him a new one. So you have to look to sell him in the summer. And there's plenty of Mavropanos as well, obviously doing very, very well in Germany. Um, doing well for Stuttgart. Not sure Stuttgart will be able to afford him. Others in Germany might. Don't think that Arsenal will be looking at Mavropanos as a long-term uh, solution to their centre-backs um, position. So again, you try and make, raise as much money for him. Um, it's very few of the players who are really out on loan that I see will um, potentially come back and make a big impact. Obviously, Saliba's the one that you look at and think you could certainly still have a chance, given your age, given your potential, to come back and make a big success of it at Arsenal. Uh, when he was also asked if he's happy with the performance of the loanees or happy with much game time some of the loanees are getting, he said, I'm happy with some than others. You want to see your players play regularly. And with some, that has not been the case. Obviously, there, Torreira, a case in point, really. Right, let's turn our attentions to Arsenal versus Liverpool, shall we? Big, big game at the Emirates. Big, big week for Arsenal. Liverpool on Saturday evening, then Slavia Prague, first leg, that key Europa League quarter final coming up on Thursday night. Um, Will Arteta be thinking about that ahead of um, that game instead of Liverpool game? I'm just going to try and find some quotes because he actually did say that. Um, talk about that. Um, for me, I think I've said this before in a, a different video that uh, the Europa League has to take preference for me at the moment. I just think it's Arsenal's best way of getting back into the Champions League. I think that's pretty much done in terms of their chances through the Premier League. Yes, there's still a slight chance Um and uh, Mikel was asked, you know, winning the Europa League, is it the best way again? And Champions League said that's the other way. We don't know what the first way will be. It will depend on our results and performances. We need to go game by game and try and maximise every chance that we have, um, which I can kind of understand. But I think even he will know that um, Slavia Prague, uh, sorry, the Europa League is, is a better chance for Arsenal. But when asked whether he'll focus or have Slavia and Prague in mind when he's picking his team to play, play Liverpool on Saturday. He said the immediate priority is Liverpool. We know that if we want to climb the table and have a chance to be in Europe next season through the Premier League, we need to show some consistency now in the last nine games. We need to get on a run of winning matches and the only way to do that is to start against Liverpool. We don't have any margin and we have to win that game. So there, from those comments, it certainly looks like he's going to go full strength against Liverpool tomorrow. I think he will as well, even though that Slavia Prague game is really, really important. There is four games four days um, gap in between it. So I'm expecting him to go pretty much full strength. Obviously, there's a couple of injury doubts, which we'll get to later on in this video. But um, I'm not expecting too many changes from what you would expect to be Arsenal starting at 11 for that game. I mean, he does have some big, big decisions to make. Arteta, you look at the key decisions in terms of his team selection. You look at Aubameyang and Lacazette. I mean, that's massive. Who plays? Does if you, I don't think we'll see what we saw against West Ham in mid uh, before the international break and Aubameyang playing on the wing. I can't imagine we will see that just because Aubameyang was so, so poor in that game, in that position. Maybe we will, but I, I would think that you're going to go with what, either one of the two as your central striker. Um, you know, that's a really big decision for me. The big, big praise from Mikel Arteta for Alexander Lacazette. I'm sure you've seen it. I did the video uh, about it with the comments yesterday saying he's been phenomenal the last few months and he has been very, very good. 
great against West Ham before the international break. I think he absolutely deserves to keep his place in a starting eleven for me at the moment, um, which then suggests that Aubameyang is going to have to be on the bench, which we'll wait and see. But that's certainly a big decision for him. And if you're not going to play Aubameyang on the left-hand side, who plays over there? Because obviously I don't think Saka is going to be fit. That's very unlikely. Doesn't look like Smith Rowe is going to be fit either. That's unlikely. And so then it's a case of who plays on the wide positions. You think Pepe will probably play on the right, and then you could have Willian on the left, perhaps or Gabriel Martinelli. I know a lot of you would prefer to see Gabriel Martinelli over there, but previous history would suggest it's probably going to be Willian, isn't it? Um, so they're the big decisions for me. Who plays on the left and who plays as a central striker? They're the ones that Mikel is really going to have to consider when he um, when he picks his team to face Liverpool. So team news-wise ahead of that game, not much has changed, really. We're still looking at Saka and Smith-Rowe as the big, big doubts. Saka's got his hamstring injury, hadn't been able to join up with the group yet. Been working individually after being pulled out of the England squad by uh, Arsenal and the medical staff and Mikel Arteta. Emil Smith wrote the same. He's got a hip problem. Um, so that's not looking ideal for Arsenal. You're looking like you could be about the two young English boys who have made such a big difference to the team and to results since they've um, since Mikel sort of settled on that 4-2-3-1 system since the Chelsea game on Boxing Day. Liverpool have Roberto Firmino back available after he missed the last few games through injury has a very very good scoring record against Arsenal though I think only one of those has come at the Emirates he's got seven in uh, the Premier League against the Gunners so Liverpool would be delighted to have him back but you would think Diego Jota is probably going to be the player who starts up front for uh, for Liverpool given his form he scored before the international break he scored during the international break so I wouldn't be surprised to see a front three of Jota, Mane and of um uh, Salah for Liverpool right let's go through my predicted 11 then like I said I'm feeling like Mikel's going to go very very strong for this one I don't think he's really going to have an eye on that game against Slavia Prague given there's four days difference to go so um, providing I'm doing this on the basis of both Smith Rowe and Saka miss out we don't know that for sure yet but that's what I'm feeling is going to happen that they're not going to make it because of injury so my predicted start in 11 obviously um Bernd Leno will start in goal I'm going to say Bellerin at right back obviously it could well be Cedric Suarez um but I'm going to say he's going to go with Bellerin Louise and Gabriel obviously as the center backs it feels like he's settled on that at the moment Kieran Tierney obviously nailed on for the left back spot central midfield Granite Xhaka and Thomas Partey as the midfield two and then the the key decisions here, the one that might, um, it'll be interesting to see what he's gone with, what he will go with. But what I'm predicting will be Nicolas Pepe on the right, on the right, Martin Odegaard as a number 10 behind the striker, Willian on the left, and I'm going to say Lacazette as a central striker. So Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang having to make do with a place on the bench. So run through that one, one last time. Leno, Bellerin, Louise, Gabriel, Tierney, Xhaka, Partey, Pepe, Odegaard, Willian and Lacazette. That is my predicted 11. Not saying that is what he's going to go with. Not saying that's what I want him to go with. That's just me trying to predict what Mikel might do. Right, that's it for the video today. Everyone, thank you very much for your time. As always, really, really appreciate it. Whatever you're doing over this Easter holiday weekend, do enjoy yourself. Uh, if you're over in the UK, certainly enjoy the next couple of days because it's going to get very, very cold again for Easter Monday, which is annoying because I've started to feel like summer is on the way. But what can you do? Right, until the next video, everyone, enjoy your day and I'll speak to you very, very soon.